Hello. In my last video, which was about Tower Hamlet Cemetery, I mentioned that as far as I knew, none of the victims of the Whitechapel murders were buried within uh, Whitechapel Cemetery. I wasn't 100% sure. And sure enough, uh, when I released the video, I was corrected by a, a guy called Rob Clack, who is a quite well-known uh, ripperologist, um, who's told me that someone called Ro Rose Milet, otherwise known as Catherine Millet, she had various different names, who was one of the Whitechapel murders, perhaps one of the least well-known Whitechapel murder victims, was indeed buried in uh, Tower Hamlet Cemetery. Now, uh, Rose Milet was murdered in Poplar, just off Poplar High Street on Clark's uh, Yard um, on the 20th of December, 1888. And uh, some, uh, you know, lots of people don't think that she's probably a, a victim of, of Jack the Ripper. Now I'm going to discuss the case, uh, uh, the details of the case about Rose Milet a little bit later on in the video. But, you know, some people don't even think that, suffice to say, some people don't even think she was necessarily a murder victim, but I'll, I'll come on to that later. Now, when Rob Clack po pointed me in the direction of a, a thread on a thing called JTR Forums, which is the best resource on the internet, in my opinion, on details uh, about Jack the Ripper. A thread started by a guy called uh, Jose Ar um, Aranta, I think that's how you pronounce his name, apologies to him if not, uh, on graveyards. Uh, he's particularly interested in it. It's a thread which I had contributed to, but I've missed the bit about Rose Milet. There's lots of information on JTR forms. I've missed the bit about, uh, about Rose Milet. And Jose had put up a picture of what he believed to be the grave of Rose Myler in Tower Hamlet Cemetery. And I looked at this after Rob Clack pointed me in the direction of it, and I believed it probably wasn't the right one. Unbeknownst to them, the grave, Rose Milet's grave is, she's, un, she's listed under, under the name Catherine Millet, and um, her grave number is P277. Unbeknownst to them, it's something that came to light when I did this big map of Tower Hamlet Cemetery, there, there's 12 grave 277s. The grave they identified as being Rose Milet's grave, P277, was just listed as 277, and it's on a, a prominent pathway, which is just behind me. And the prominent pathway is quite near the entrance, quite near Dr Llewellyn's grave, uh, actually on the pathway. Now, pathway burials are nearly always private graves. They're quite expensive, they're quite prestigious. And all the Whitechapel murder victims, who, who, where we know their graves, are always into the common plots in a sort of tucked out the way part of the cemetery because they, they didn't have money lavished on their, on their funeral, uh, rightly or wrongly. And so I, I said it was very unlikely, the grey, I felt it was unlikely. They agreed that the grave that they had identified as 277, which is, it is 277, but it's not necessarily 277P because they didn't realise there was lots of different prefixes on these graves. There's about 20 different prefixes, K, A, D, B, symbols as well, triangles, all sorts of prefixes. And I've identified 12 different 277s within this cemetery. So then I had to look at all these 277s and eliminate which ones I knew had different prefixes, different letters and not P. Uh, and to, to scroll down and find out which one is the correct one. And guess what? I think they were actually right. I think they were right about with this, the grave that they had identified. And we're going to go and have a look at it now. So I'll show you the grave, which, as I say, found by Yose. And with the, you know, Rob Clack also found it, or found the grave next to it, actually, at the time. Yose really found the grave. And it's just around here. Dr. Llewellyn's grave is just over, over there. And uh, it's, it's a, this was a, a wider path at the time, one of the main paths into the graveyard, which makes it so surprising that it was there. And it's just in here. It's at this uh, position here where this, where this stone is. This stone, um, you know, almost certain isn't her stone, but the grave would have been here. I'm actually standing on it rather poorly. Her grave would have been here.
Now let's take a look at some of the details of the case of Rose Milet, also known as Davis or Catherine Millet or Fair Alice Downey or less flatteringly Drunken Lizzie. Her aliases were known at the time and recorded. Unlike Charles Lechmere, whose true name remained unknown for 120 years and who hid under the identity of Charles Cross for all that time. I just say that as there are some people who fail to understand the different circumstances between cases such as Rose Milet's and that of Charles Lechmere. But not, let's not get too diverted by that at the moment at least. Rose Milet lived in Spitalfields on George Street, the same street where other Jack the Ripper or other Whitechapel murder victims lived, such as Emma Smith, Martha Tabram and Mary Kelly also lived there at one point. At about 2.30 in the early hours of the morning of the 20th of December 1888, just over a month after the murder of Mary Jane Kelly, Milet was seen outside the George pub on Commercial Road. Milet was next seen a couple of miles away to the east by two policemen, Sergeant Golding and PC Costello at 4.15 a.m. inside Clark's Yard, which was between 184 and 186 Poplar High Street. This seems to have been her soliciting territory. She had been seen doing that, just that, earlier in the evening. She was a prostitute and usually they did not trade in the immediate vicinity of their lodgings and there was a brothel very close by. Rose Milet was dead. A Dr Harris was called and pronounced that life was extinct. The body was taken to the local mortuary and there marks and scratches were found around her neck by the coroner's assistant. The post-mortem was performed by the police divisional surgeon, Dr Brownfield, the next day. He noted, blood was oozing from the nostrils and there was a slight abrasion on the right side of the face. On the neck was a mark which had evidently been caused by a cord drawn tightly round the neck from the spine to the left ear. Such a mark would have been by a four thread cord. There were also impressions of the thumbs and the middle and index fingers of some person plainly visible on each side of the neck. Death was due to strangulation. Deceased could not have done it herself. Marks on her neck were probably caused by her trying to pull the cord off. The murderer must have stood at, at the rear left of the woman and having the ends of the cord around his hands, thrown it around her throat, crossed his hands and thus strangled her. The inquest opened on the 21st of December and was presided over by the coroner, Wynne Baxter, a familiar face from other river inquests. The case came to the attention of Robert Anderson, Deputy Commissioner at Scotland Yard and Head of the Criminal Investigation Department. He came over to Poplar to see for himself and look at the body. This is perhaps not entirely surprising as the Ripper scare had not dissipated and Scotland Yard took a great interest in these crimes. Anderson had been appointed on the 27th of August that year and actually had no background as a policeman. He had previously assisted central government in some matters to do with intelligence work. It must be emphasised that he was a political appointee like all the senior officers in the Metropolitan Police at this time. Despite having zero experience as a policeman and only having been a few months uh, in service, Anson decided that it was not a murder and sent for the Scotland Yard surgeon, Dr Thomas Bond, to do another investigation. But Dr Hebert, Bond's assistant, went down instead. We have come across Hebert and Bond many times in previous videos. Hebert agreed with the opinion of the, of the other doctors that it was a case of willful murder by strangulation.
Anson was not happy with this and he presumed to second guess the doctors even though he had even less medical experience than he had as a policeman. He insisted on Dr Bond going down to inspect the body and provide a report that was more agreeable to him and shamefully Bond complied. Bond theorised that Milet had fallen down while drunk and choked to death on a stiff velvet collar. So the official police view became that Milet wasn't murdered at all, let alone that this was a Jack the Ripper case. This was despite the opinion of multiple doctors who agreed she had been murdered. Others had been sent down from Scotland Yard and all, except the compliant Dr Bond, agreed with the local doctors. The inquest reconvened on the 2nd of January and Dr Harris testified that the collar on Rose Milet's dress was loose. Wynne Baxter castigated the police for interfering with the medical examinations, noting that Bond only saw the body five days after her death. The inquest jury found that it was a case of willful murder by person or persons unknown. Anderson had been appointed to his role by Sir Charles Warren, who was then the Commissioner of the Metropolitan Police. Warren had been forced to resign just a month before this case in November 1888 as a result of public disquiet about the failure of the police to apprehend Jack the Ripper. Jack the Ripper had cost Warren his police career. That is why, in my opinion, Anderson wanted Milet to have died as a result of falling on a stiff starched neck collar. The higher echelons at Scotland Yard were determined that there would be no more Ripper murders. It had to be a case of accidental death, just an alleged murder, swept under the carpet. Nothing to see here, move on, not to be investigated. Poor Rose Milet never had any sort of justice and was sacrificed on the altar of expediency. In his self-serving autobiography, The Lighter Side of My Official Life, Anderson claimed Milet had died of natural causes. This claim by Anderson was an act of supreme arrogance and it puts into a sharp relief all his opinions on the Ripper case. In later years, he condescendingly claimed to have solved the case and believed it was the work of a mad Jew. Back in the real world and the Milet case. There were obvious similarities to the Ripper murders. She was this, from the same immediate area as many of the other victims, George Street. She was from the same class as the other victims, a prostitute. I might go into this modern business of pretending these victims weren't prostitutes in another video. Uh, it's as if eliminating this very real aspect of their lives makes them, would make them superior as victims somehow, but I am digressing. She was also murdered in the early hours of the morning. She was found in a yard off a main thoroughfare similar to Liz Stride and Annie Chapman, for example. She was apparently a motiveless murder in the usual understanding of that term. She was strangled. There were no ripping or cuts, but it's almost certain that the ripper victims were strangled before they were attacked with a knife. Uh, perhaps the murderer was disturbed, maybe by Sergeant Golding, uh, before he could have employed his knife. Or perhaps the murderer only, I say only, intended to strangle his victim. She was murdered in the East End, not in the immediate vicinity of Whitechapel and Spitalfields, but still in the East End, just two miles away from the other murders. In previous videos I've noted that the George, where Rose Milet was last seen alive, is virtually on the route between Lechmere's house in Doveton Street and his old stamping ground in the area around James Street and his mother's address at uh, Mary Ann Street which is where his daughter also lived. <laughs>
This map shows in detail the location of Clark's Yard and the close proximity of a Pickford's depot. And need I remind anyone that Lechmere worked for Pickford's. There were rail connections from Poplar straight to the main Pickford's depot at Broad Street where Lechmere worked. At least he said he did in September 1888. So Lechmere potentially had reason to be on Poplar High Street. An investigator and indeed a jury would find this connection most, I think the word I'm looking for is probative, in providing opportunity. Where was Charles Lechmere on that fateful morning, just five days before Christmas in 1888? Now this is a slight curiosity in Tower Hamlet Cemetery. This area here is where the mortuary used to be. It used to be in the angle of this wall here. This is the edge, the boundary wall, railway line, and the mortuary was in here, in this, this area here. There's a few bricks on the floor which are probably part of the uh, demolished remains of it, but really you wouldn't know. The, the wall here is slightly different, so I'm going to guess that was the back retaining wall of the of the mortuary I've got a couple other curiosities to show you within the cemetery here this is the boundary marker the boundary between the old bur borough of Bromley St. St. Leonard's and Mile End Old Town used to run through here. There's another boundary marker right up the other side, the other end of the uh, cemetery. The boundary between the two uh, districts ran through here with the vestry, the vestry clerk of Bromley St. Leonard's and the church wardens and so forth of Mile End Old Town. And the other curious thing just down here. Here, in this gap here, were the toilets for the um, for the cemetery. For people who have come to the to look at a graveyard or whatever, probably the grave workers, the grave diggers. There was toilets here. Again, it was demolished when the in uh, 1967 when the uh, the Great London Council took charge of, of Tower Hamlet Cemetery, and we're going to turn it into a park and smashed a lot of places up. You can see some of the stonework. Um, this is not big enough to be a gravestone and there's another one here which are probably roofing tiles or something for the, for the toilet. There's quite a lot of brickwork here which is probably the rubble from the old, uh, the old lavatories for the, to for the cemetery. Now this is obviously the house of Lechmere so I'll give you a bit of Lechmere content, specific Lechmere content, not related to Rose Milet. And this uh, cemetery includes the graves of some of the victims of the Bethnal Green Tube disaster of the 3rd of March 1943 when uh, a number of people, a large number of people, were killed at Bethnal Green Tube Station in a, uh, uh, an incident during the war and a chunk of them are buried here and amongst them were three members of the Lechmere family and this here is their grave. You've got Thomas Allen Lechmere, who was the son of Charles Lechmere, Florence Lechmere, who was his uh, uh, daughter-in-law, the wife of Thomas Allen, and Thomas Allen's son, Thomas Charles Lechmere. They all died in the Bethel Green Tube disaster.
was a nice little story about the murder. Well, not a nice story about the murder of Rose Milet, but a nice little story about her grave. The next episode, we'll be looking at the Lechmere graves, and uh, besides the Bethany Green Tube disaster ones, and they are difficult to find. I sort of outlined how difficult it was just to find the Rose Milet grave or ensure that, it, that the one that Yosei had identified was the correct Rose Milet, uh, grave 277 because there were 12 277s and with the poorer people it's difficult to find the right grave because they use the same number in the cemetery multiple times but I will find all the Lechmere graves and show you them very soon. But anyway Thank you for watching. From the back streets of modern day Tower Hamlets, goodbye. Thank you for watching and please subscribe and share.